Hi, my name is Dean Clayton, and I'm a product manager for Microfocus, uh, working in the IT operations uh, management space. And today, I'm going to be talking about two of our products, uh, CMS, Configuration Management System, and SMAX, our Service Management Automation X product. Firstly, I'm going to focus on our CMS solution, which helps map your configuration management data with the services that are delivered to the business. And in this session, I'm going to showcase how you can review and manage a service, including performing an impact simulation on that service, as well as creating a compliance report. Here's the typical view within CMS of the dashboard. Here we can see uh, with the data that we're showing on the screen, uh, our topology of uh, Amazon, Azure, and Google Cloud, as well as the VMware data, and also running software that's actually on all of those different infrastructure that we see as part of this view. In this demo, we're gonna do uh, start working with discovered service called Point of Sale. This service is moving into production, and we want to make sure it's ready to go especially since you know there's a storage update pending and you're worried the service may be impacted when this update occurs. So the first step is we wanna make sure we map this service onto, that, onto this view. And then we start to add in the details about our widget. So we'll uh, identify it as a report, we'll give it a name, we'll then select a particular report that we've got already pre-configured and we'll select the service. And then what we're gonna do is we'll save that as part of this view. From a user perspective, they don't know anything about the infrastructure that's supporting this service, so the service model doesn't display these components by default. Here we can see the overall high-level view of that service model that's been designed. It shows the business application at the top, load balancer, which allows for some high availability services, and the actual POS application and the application database. In the report you created, you identified a collection of attributes that you felt were important for each CI, and these attributes are displayed here. You're interested in the types of relations between each record. So we'll zoom in. You can see here that instead of a single relationship between the point of sale application and its load balancer, you actually see multiple relationships. Now, because we're interested in evaluating the impact of a down storage environment, you need to see the related servers attached to each of the instances of running software. To do this, we need to display the layer that includes the AWS infrastructure that's supporting the service. To do that, we need to click on the menu icon and click on add layers so we can see the AWS infrastructure. You know the storage associated with the Tomcat service is being updated as part of some changes that's occurring. So if we click on the East 2 Windows 7 named Tomcat 2, we can drill down into the specific discovered configuration. In this case, we want to see the server properties. So you can click on the text properties that's at the top of the screen, and that allows us to drive in and see more details. After clicking the edit mode, what we can do is we'll up, in this example, we'll update the owner and we'll set it to Jack, save the changes to the record. Now we want to investigate this service to ensure that bringing down this server to update its disk will not cause the overall service to be stopped. To do this, we need to identify the disk CI that's related to this server. So if we click on related servers, we can start to see the detail. One of those is obviously the logical volume, which is the disk. So this allows us to launch the impact analysis capability and understand what's happening when something happens on that particular logical volume. As this is a what if, we can tell the system the type of impact we're going to investigate. We'll say it's a critical one because obviously we're bringing the disk down. You're relieved to know that because of the load balance is in place, there's another server running the same software. So the overall service will not go down. It will experience some form of impact, which indicates that your full capability of both services is not available, but at least the service will remain available to your customers. Those impact simulations can be really useful to understand the overall resilience of your services and maybe identify where there be a need to spend additional money on IT and infrastructure. Another function of CMS, which can be really useful to the business, is understanding your overall compliance. If we look at our point of sale service and we drill down into our AWS infrastructure again, let's take a look at applying a compliance around one of our particular components, the Amazon EBS system, and look at the details just like before. We can see here that the volume isn't encrypted. And maybe that's something as a company policy we want, want to set. What we should also do at this point is maybe create a report so we can look over time about how our overall stance is for all our Amazon EBS systems. One of the good things with CMS is it comes with some out of the box policies, which you can apply to your overall infrastructure to help you and understand. 
So if we dive into our Amazon account and let's apply you know, a policy to all EBS storage that should be encrypted. So if we click on the green button and look at our baseline policies, we can apply one of these policies to that report that we have. This particular one is actually an out of the box policy that comes with CMS. Here we can see there are 25 instances of EBS storage that are encrypted as required. However, there's a further 87 that aren't. And based on our recent discovery of AWS accounts, there's also a ton of other ones, but they're not applicable because they aren't EBS storage. And we haven't applied a suitable filter in this view. We need to monitor the improvement over time. One of the best ways to do that monitoring over time is to basically add it as a port that appears on your dashboard. So let's go back to our policy settings here and we'll save the policy as a view, which we can then use as a report on our homepage. As before, we just add the widget by selecting the report we've just recently created and save, and we can have that data available to us on the dashboard. And just like that, we now have that compliance report available on our dashboard, not just for myself, but for other people as well. So we can monitor the situation and improve it over time. Now we turn our attention to SMAX, our service management application. In this session, I'm going to look at some of the machine learning and AI capabilities that we have within SMAX. This includes things like our smart virtual agent, our hot topic analytics to understand what's impacting uh, the business and users. I'm also going to look at it from a change management perspective, focus on our change capabilities and also CI detection and our analytical insights to help you identify how to improve the overall services that you deliver. First stop, let's look at our service portal. The SMAC service portal is designed as to be easy to use for all business users. From the portal, a user can browse the service catalog to get the support they need, either through knowledge or raising a service or support request. They can also be made aware of any issues through the news functionality which is displayed on the right hand side of the screen or as within the different categories of the service catalog. In the world of enterprise service management, it's important to have a single portal that can cater to those non-IT use cases such as facility security or HR. The search functionality of SMAX is driven by our embedded machine learning to provide suggested answers based on what a user types in the field. Likewise, it automatically learns based on the searches a user makes, improving the search index and helping your users get the answers they need. One other feature within the service portal is approvals. This helps managers manage the requests from their team without the need to log in into the agent interface or consumer license. While not shown, you can also access the service portal through a native mobile app or use a smart inbound email feature, which will suggest relevant knowledge or catalog offerings based on what the end user states in their email. Likewise, they can handle their approvals that way as well. Now let's go take a look at Max, our smart virtual agent. Max uses natural language understanding to interpret the intents that an end user types into the chat. Likewise, it can learn based on the searches that are done within the system to produce the right kind of results. This allows Max to suggest the most suitable offering or R to the user based on their input. In this first example, we have entered a straightforward request for a new PC. And as you can see, Max has responded with an appropriate offering form for the users to submit a request. One of the advantages with Max is its tightly integration to your existing service catalog and offerings. This means that all the dynamic fields are presented as if there would be someone just browsing and selecting something in the catalog. Likewise, that means if you need to include pricing, you can have that set and do dynamic pricing based on the values that someone enters within the form. This also means that from a point of view of Max, it makes it easier to manage and to maintain. Okay, so let's restart the chat and show another example. This time, we're not going to be as obvious with our request to Max and just provide him with a symptom of our current issue, stating that my laptop keeps rebooting. As you can see, through the use of automated learning, Max is able to identify the user's intent and suggest an appropriate support request for the user. You can also see here another machine learning feature in action as we provide suggested values in blue for the drop down service field. These suggestions are not configured by an admin, but are shown based on similar requests being raised in the past and the smart analytics learning how to respond correctly. In our final example, we can show how Max can use a more conversational approach to helping a user solve their issue. In this instance, I'm going to look to update my contact information with a new address and telephone number. As you can see, instead of just providing a form for me to fill out, Max is asking 
individual questions for each of the items of data related to raising the appropriate request. In some cases where it's not a mandatory field, I also get the option to skip the question if I want to. But for now, let's just fill out all the questions and get this request raised. Because we are able to utilize the power of the SMAC service catalog and its task plan engine, we can automate the actual request raised, and in this case, complete the user's request before they've left the chat, showing that the HR system has been updated. As you can see, Max has many useful features and functionality. And the great thing is, is once enabled, it will work automatically with your service catalog that you've already created. Okay, that's all for on the service portal. Let's move across and look at the agent side now. Here we see the SMAX agent interface dashboard. The dashboard can be personalized with your own views and report widgets to help you focus on your day-to-day -day activities, provide quick access to the work that you need to do. The report widgets can be moved around, resized or maximized as needed, allowing you to customize it to your every needs. As you can see from the SMAX mega menu, there are many different out of the box apps to assist you with service delivery and support within your organization. In fact, you can even create your own apps with SMAX Studio or up upload apps developed by other customers and partners from the ITAM marketplace. Obviously, we don't have time to show everything today, so we're going to focus on a few core cool features. The Hot Topic Analytics is available in a number of the apps and provides a holistic grouping of records based on keyword analysis of the unstructured data that has been typed in. This allows you to provide proactive problem management of incident records, understand responses to surveys, or identify gaps in the service catalog and knowledge articles by looking at the searches that a user makes on the SMAC service portal. Let's jump to change management and take a look at the change calendar functionality. As the change manager, you can get the forward schedule of change, see high level details of plan changes and make adjustments without having to go into the record itself. The change calendar also highlights changes that are approved or outside of maintenance windows. And again, thanks to the machine learning capability, it can suggest the next available slot for a change should you have the need to reschedule it. Of course, there's always a need to look at the details on the change record, especially if you are responsible for progressing the change through its life cycle. But that doesn't mean to say you have to spend all day filling out fields or doing appropriate analysis on the change prior to approval. Thanks to our CI detection capability, any time you type in a configuration item that is in the integrated CMS, it will automatically detect it and add it as a related CI to the record, saving you precious time. Even better, just like many of the out-of-the-box modules, the right-hand side additional information tab can hold useful information to your record. And change, this gives you insights into success rates, risk analysis of similar changes, but also the ability to review those changes if you want more information. Speaking of insights, change analytics is a great way to help you improve the overall service that you deliver and move from changes that always require sign off and approval to becoming consistent and repeatable activities that can be automated, allowing you in the business to focus on business. Not only can you use these insights to look at how successful changes are across different services, and in this example here where we're doing it with the point of sale service, but you can also use it to identify potential change models that are good candidates to become either standard change or suitable for automation. SMAC's embedded machine learning provides action points on how to improve and focus business efforts. So that was a brief taster of what our CMS and SMAC's products provide. I hope you enjoyed the demonstration today and look forward to hearing your questions.